Okay, chapter 6. Find the least common denominator of each expression. Okay, so um, I think they want us to factor these. Let's factor these. Uh, I think you should remember how to factor x and x minus, which means we're going to have a positive and a negative, right? Positive and a negative, because positive and a negative times each other give you a minus. So what times what is equal to 35? 5 times 7. The bigger one has to be positive, because we have a positive 2 hex here. 7 and a minus 5. And if you look at those, it'll probably work out x squared minus 5x plus 7x. Plus 7x and a minus 5x is a positive 2x. Multiple them together. Okay, that works. xx minus, so we've got a plus and a minus. Because they multiply to give you a negative 10. Um, let's try 5 and 2. Because they'll make 3 if you subtract them. The bigger one needs to be negative. So we have a, a smaller one. It's positive, is that right? x squared minus 5x plus 2x is minus 3x minus 10. Okay, that's good. So uh, we have an x plus 7, an x minus 5, and an x plus 2, an x minus 5. So we need an x plus 2 over here, and then so if we'd multiply this side by x plus 2 over x plus 2, this would give us this common denominator. This side would be multiplied by x plus 7 over x plus 7 in the form of 1. That would give us the same common denominator. But anyway, the common denominator is this x plus 2 times x plus 7 times x minus 5, which is what they told us in the back of the book. Number 29, perform the indicated operation. Okay, so um, we're subtracting. We have a, a whole number subtracted by a fraction. We have to make this a fraction, right? So that's just like 7 over 1 minus b plus 1 over b minus 1. We need a common denominator. We need b minus 1 for the common denominator. So over here, we're going to multiply this by b minus 1 over b minus 1. And that, that's just a formal one, it's that divided by itself. But it's going to give on the bottom the, the common denominator, right? So we're going to have 7 outside of b minus 1 over b minus 1 minus b plus 1 over b minus 1. And we can go ahead and multiply this out. 7, 7 b, 7 times a negative 1 is minus 7. So this leads us to 7 b minus 7. Okay, since this is a minus b plus 1, it's going to be a minus b plus 1. And this is all over b minus 1. I need to slow down. Okay, so minus 1 times a b is a minus b. Minus 1 times a positive 1 is a minus 1. So now we have 7b minus 7 minus b minus 1 all over b minus 1. Let's combine this stuff on the top. 7b minus b is 6b, right? Minus 7 and a minus 1 is a minus 8. This is all over b minus 1. I think that's our answer. 6b minus 8 over b minus 1. Yes. Bingo. Okay, if you can't figure out if I go too fast or screw up because I'm tired, um, and you can't follow, please ask me, Hannah. Okay, number 47. Let me take a drink and freak you out with my mouth noises. Oh, that's so good. What do we have here? Uh, we're dividing, right? But we have a fraction divided by a fraction. Okay, so remember dividing fractions, 
how do you do how do you divide fractions well you multiply by the inverse so this is equal to x cubed plus 64 over 2x squared minus 32 multiplied by 2x plus 12 over x squared minus 4x plus 16. Okay, you know, um, we could take the first, okay, so when you multiply fractions, it's the top times the top yeah, over the bottom times the bottom. And we could just jump right in here and start um, multiplying terms, first times the first, first times the second, second times the first, and that's legal, you would get the right answer. It would be it take an insanely uh, a lot of work. But let's uh, let's see if we can factor and do some canceling before we do that heavy duty multiplication. This thing right here, um, yeah, let me undo that. What do I do? Small eraser. This thing right here may be the trickiest to see. And you've got that bloody sum of squares, don't we? Um, the special formulas, factoring with special formulas. What was that? Let's see. Okay, so sum of cubes. Well, 64 is what? 4 cubed, right? So this, this is the same as x cubed plus 4 cubed. Remember, a cubed plus b cubed is equal to, and you have this stored in your calculator, right? a plus b outside of a squared minus a b plus b squared. Yeah, that's what it was. And so x cubed plus 4 cubed, a is equal to x, right? a is equal to x and b is equal to 4. And so we can just plug this in. This is x plus 4 outside of x squared minus 4x plus 16. And all this is this up here, right? Okay, well, we're going to multiply it by, by this 2x plus 12. You can pull a 2 out of both of those, right? 2 outside of x plus 6. Down here on this bottom, okay, so that's on our top. That's our numerator, right? Let's change colors for the denominator. We can pull a 2 out of each one of these terms, right? So this is 2 outside of x squared minus 16 x squared minus 16, that is a difference of squares, right? So that's 2, that's a x plus 4, x minus 4. Oh, wow. And then we have this part right here. And this is multiplied by x squared minus 4x plus 16. Okay, so we can start canceling now, I think. This one cancels with this one. x plus 4 cancels with x plus 4. 2 cancels with 2. So on top you just have x plus 6 and on bottom you have x minus 4. Okay. I can't slow down too much because I'm getting tired. <coughs> so if I'm going too fast, you can pause it, rewind it, or ask me questions tomorrow after I get back from deer hunting. Let's try another one. 51. <clears throat> this would be a lot more impressive if I didn't have the answer sitting right here, wouldn't it? You'd think I was actually smart. Okay, find the domain of f of x. When you look at this f of x right here, what and, and basically it's x is the domain right x is the, the x values are the domain and the y values well what values of x is possible you can have every value of x the only thing you can't have is zero in the denominator because you cannot divide by zero right can't divide by zero so what would make the denominator zero well 
Uh, the only thing that would make the denominator zero if, is if x was a negative 2 minus 2 plus 2 would be equal to 0. So the domain of this one is every number of x except x is equal to 2. And that's why the answer is this. It's the set of real numbers such that x is equal to all numbers such that x is not equal to a negative 2. Not equal to a negative 2. Can equal a negative 2. Likewise for g of x right here, x can't equal a negative 4. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Then you're dividing by 0 and you just can't do it. But x could be everything else. So it's a set of all numbers such that x is not equal to negative 4. Okay, uh, C, they want to know what f plus g of x is. Let's work that out. If we have x plus 1 over x plus 2, and we want to add that to x over x plus 4, well, our denominator has got to be x plus 2 times x plus 4. So this one, you're going to have to multiply x plus 4 over x plus 4 to get our common denominator. That's just a form of 1, right? x plus 4 divided by x plus 4 is 1, so we're not changing the overall value. This one, we need a x plus 2 over... This thing is lagging on me, driving me crazy. x plus 2, there we go, that's better. And let's just multiply some of this stuff out and see if we can't figure it out here. Okay, so so this one is going to be x times x is x squared, x times 1 is plus x, 4 times x is plus 4x, 4 times 1 is plus 4, so this is going to be x squared plus 5x plus 4. We're going to have plus this stuff over here, right? x squared plus 2x. x squared plus 2x. And all of this, big bad boy, is over x plus 4 times x plus 2. This x squared plus x squared, so we'd make that 2x squared and get rid of that one. 2x and 5x would be 7x, so we can get rid of that. Our answer is 2x squared plus 7x plus 4 over x plus 4 and x plus 2. Is that what we like? Oh well, look, there it is right there. Why do we even have to do that? Okay, uh, and then they're asking us the domain of this one. What is the domain of this one? Well, the domain of this one is a set of all... But, okay, <clears throat> this is something times something, right? So if this side is 0, the whole thing would be 0. Or if this side is 0, the whole thing would be 0. So this would be 0 if x is a negative 4, and this one would be 0 if x is negative 2. So it's a set of all real numbers such that x is not equal to a negative 2 or a negative 4. The only other thing to worry about <clears throat> when you're, you're looking for domain is if there's a square root in there somewhere. Uh, 3 minus x. So you can't have a negative inside the square root. So the domain could be all numbers um, but it can't be, in this case, x could not be uh, greater than 3. x would have to be less than 3. Because if it's greater than 3, then it's negative, and you can't have a square root of a negative number. It doesn't work. So the domain would be all numbers. Um, x is, I think it would have some funky little bracket, x is a set of all numbers such that x is less than 3. That would be the domain of, of this one if there was a function f of x is equal to that. Okay, so those are the only two rules. One, you can't have 0 in the denominator, and you can't have a negative in the square root. 
and those will help you find the functions of or the domains of functions okay let's get to going here okay 54 simplify each complex fraction let's uh let's make we can't have multiple terms okay we gotta we gotta we gotta add those things together before we can divide these two things right just have to do it so the common denominator in that top is x y so this would be uh, you'd have to times this by y over y this one by x over x so you'd have 2y plus 4x over xy. Pause it, look at that a little bit, see how I did that. That's the way it has to be. This one is over 1. So to get the common denominator here, you have to times this by y over y, because then the common denominator is y. So this one is x plus y cubed over y. Since this is a division problem, you can multiply by the inverse, so this is the same thing as multiplying by y over x plus y cubed. And we'll just get rid of all this stuff. Where did my big eraser go? There you go. Bam. Gone. Multiplying these things, so you have y times all this, right? So, change colors so we can see y times this first one is 2y squared y times the second one is plus 4xy all this is over and we'll change colors again xy times that one is x squared y right xy times this one is plus x y to the fourth wonder what they have 4x <laughs> we didn't even come close what happened here uh, you know what this would all work because we have y's in each one of these so we can cancel this y, we can cancel this y. This would make it a y to the third. This makes it a y, right? And let's, uh, what's the biggest x we have? Just a single x. Let's cancel this x. Make that an x there. Cancels this x. What does that leave us? We have. Two y plus I must have made a mistake over x plus y. We're getting closer. Not even close. Holy cow. Okay, let's uh, pretend like I didn't do that. Let's back up. Okay, I don't think I screwed this up. Let's see. <clears> Two <throat> y plus 4x all over x times y times this is uh, y x plus y cubed all over y. I think that's right, right? I think that's right. So let's cancel before we do this um, this stuff here, let's don't do that. That makes it way too complicated and I was too tired to do it correctly. But maybe you've seen this long ago. Okay, so this is right, right? This is in parentheses. Let's cancel this y with this y. We can sure do that. That leaves us 2y plus 4x on top. And then we can take this x and multiply it through. And how does that work out? We'd have 2y plus 4x all over x squared plus xy cubed. Right? x squared plus xy cubed. I like that. I like it so much because that's what it is. Sweet. Okay. Solve each equation. Holy cow. How many more of these do we have? 
Let's do two more, then I'll stop the video quick. Let's factor this and get this solved, right? x over x, the difference of squares, x squared minus 9, I think is x plus 3 times x minus 3 plus 2 over, uh, that's right, x squared minus 3x plus 3x goes away, minus 9 gives us that. 2 over x plus 3. Now, if this is a common denominator that we need, we need an x minus 3 here which means we have to multiply the top by x minus 3 is equal to, here we have an x minus 3, but we need to, uh, let's, um, let's go x plus 3 and multiply the top by x plus 3. That's just a formal one again. And then we have common denominators throughout. And you'll see why we do this in just a second, because if we multiply the entire equation by x plus 3 and x minus 3, every term has to be multiplied by x plus 3 and x minus 3, and if we do that, it cancels with the terms in the bottom. So then we can just use the numerators and set them all equal to each other, right? x plus 2 outside of x minus 3 is equal to 4 outside of x plus 3. We do some expanding, x plus 2x minus 6 is equal to 4x plus, plus 12, right? This is 3x minus 6 is equal to 4x plus 12. Let's subtract 3x from both sides, keep the x positive. Let's subtract 12 from both sides. Uh, minus 6 minus 12 is minus 18. And there we go. Look at that. Sign up again. Okay. Solve for B. Solve for B. Okay, so we need to... We need B by itself, so let's subtract this term. So you have 1 over B left is equal to 1 over C minus 1 over A. So if you subtract... Uh, 1 over a from both sides, this is what you have, minus 1 over a, okay? Let's do the math here. Common denominator would be c times a. So this is 1 over b is equal to a over ac minus c over ac. So 1 over b is going to be equal to a minus C over AC. Okay, so I can take the inverse of both sides, right? Uh, inverse of both sides. Well, the inverse of 1 over B is B over 1. This is equal to AC over A minus C. Just flip, flip both of them, right? And I think that's... Uh, Fair enough. Way to put it. Well, B over 1 is just B, right? So B is equal to AC over A minus C. Bingo. Word problem. Good time to stop. See you in a bit.